Well, good morning, everybody. And uh, for the next two talks, we're going to be talking about parenchymal transection. And uh, Clark Gamblin from UPMC is going to be talking, uh, following myself. And so we sort of divided up the talks in a little bit of a different uh, style. What I'm going to talk about is the uh, parenchymal transection devices and how they work. And Dr. Gamblin is going to talk about actually how to use them. So without any further ado, get my stuff. So first of all, I'd like to talk about is the principles of electrosurgery. I'd like to discuss the physics of radio frequency and microwave uh, technologies, and then discuss how radio frequency energies can be used for uh, precoagulation and liver transection. So again, the history of electrosurgery goes back well back into the early uh, late 1920s uh, with uh, Bovey and Cushing, and we're all familiar with that. But when we discuss the properties of electricity, I think it's important to understand the terminology and language and how everything works. So very quickly, I'd like to talk about uh, some language. First of all, as a circuit, to particularly when we're talking about uh, uh, monopole electric cautery, we generally have some sort of generator. And remember that uh, when we have an electric current, a flow of electrons, the path of that current is going to be always but through the path of least resistance back to ground. Okay? So we generally have an electrosurgical generator, which goes down a cable to an electrosurgical pencil. The current runs through the patient to a grounding pad, uh, which is the ground, and back to the generator. And since it's alternating current, the electrons are going back and forth. So we have to have a complete circuit to have flow of electricity. Uh, current is usually defined or uh, valued in amps, and that is discusses the rate of flow of electrons or the rate of flow of the current. Impedance uh, is basically electrical resistance, so how much resistance is there of the electrons passing through the tissues. In, um, in microwave terminology, that impedance would be equivalent to permissivity. And then finally, you have voltage, which is how hard are you trying to push that current along. So basically, there's two types of electrosurgery. There's monopolar uh, surgery, as we know, as we just discussed, and then there's bipolar. Bipolar is you have a device with two active electrodes, and the, basically the current will come down the wire to one electrode, go across tissue, back to the electrode, and back to the generator to complete the circuit. Now, of late, there's been a further development in uncontrolled bipolar, which is uh, vessel sealing devices, and basically it uses the principles of bipolar technology with some sort of current and uh, energy control in addition to pressure. And there's a number of vessel sealing devices that are, uh, are used, and I'm sure everybody's familiar with all of these devices. We've certainly seen plenty of examples uh, throughout the past day and a half. And first is the uh, ligature, then the harmonic scalpel, which is not technically an electrosurgical device, the Surge RX end seal, and the gyrus. And I just want to sort of run through them all very quickly and, again, discuss how they work. Well, first is the uh, ligature. Uh, the ligature has been around now uh, since about 2000 and certainly has revolutionized uh, surgery. Basically what it is is a smart bipolar. So it's a bipolar device, and then what the generator is able to do is measure the impedance of the tissue between the two electrodes and then in a pulse fashion be able to control the current based on the impedance to maximize vessel sealing. And that in first generation ligature occurred at about 250 times per second. Now there's the second generation ligature called a force triad, uh, and since now we have faster computers and faster processors, they're able to change the software uh, within the generator. So now, again, it's still the same thing. It measures uh, tissue impedance between the electrodes. It does that at 4,000 times per second and is able to, in a continuous fashion, regulate the current and uh, wattage based on tissue impedance, again, to maximize vessel sealing pressures.